Hello and welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. So today, we're going to find out once and for all which is better, the Honor Band 4 by Huawei or the Amazfit Bip by Xiaomi. At this moment in time, these two powerhouses are among my most favourite smart wristwear. Each has some impressive benefits over the other, so let's run through some stats. The Honor Band 4 looks more like a fitness tracker, sporting a simple design that looks very similar to many other fitness trackers out there. The Amazfit Bip stands out in this respect, looking and feeling more like a watch, especially as the display is always on and has a month-long battery life. The face itself is extremely customizable, with literally hundreds of thousands of faces to download from the internet. The strap is also more customizable, as even standard watch straps can fit it. In this respect, the Honor Band 4 is a bit disappointing, with only three faces to choose from, and a difficult method of changing the straps. However, the Honor Band 4 looks significantly better when on, sporting a beautiful AMOLED display. This is where the Honor Band 4 stands out, but consequently only has a week-long battery life. The Honor Band 4 redeems itself, however, when you consider it's waterproof to a depth of 50 meters. And as for the BIP, it's not waterproof at all. When it comes to the style of these particular devices, I think actually it's very hard to compare them against each other because they're designed to look slightly different. This one's designed to look like a fitness tracker, which it does very well. And this one is designed to look like a smartwatch, which is also done quite well. Although I would say that this definitely falls more into the fitness tracker bracket because it's quite light, it's quite thin, and it's plasticky as well, which is very much like any sort of fitness tracker. The real difference, I guess, for me, comes in the straps. Now, this is the strap that comes with the Amazfit Bip, and this is the strap that comes with the Huawei Honor 4. But they're both quite nice. The difficulty or the difference in difficulty comes in the actual removal of the straps. This one is dead simple. It's got a standardized quick release system on the bottom where you simply just use your finger, pull it in and it comes out like that. Dead simple, put it back, not so much because I haven't got very long nails and you do have to have a bit of a nail to do it, but hold on, all you do is pull that in like this and you're in. So actually I can do that quite straightforward. This on the other hand is another story entirely. It's got these weird things on the bottom, little kind of like tabs that you have to get your nail in and dig out. And it actually hurts your nails when you're doing it. So you almost need like a screwdriver or something to get in there and lever it out. Overall, it's not a straightforward thing to change. So which one do I think is better in terms of style? Well, looking at the form factor alone, probably this one, because it's easier to change the band. And me personally, I like the design that it looks a bit more like a watch. It's a little bit of an oversight, the change of strap on this one, to be honest. But when it comes to style, we've got to include everything. And one of those things is the display. Now I touched on this a few moments ago, that the displays themselves, this one looks cracking, when it's off, because it's always on. It's not backlit and it's an LCD, so you can see what the time is all the time, which I really, really like. So it's very, very low power, and I think it looks quite striking on the wrist. However, when you turn it on, as I showed you, looks absolutely atrocious. I've always said this screen is pretty horrible and it's reminiscent of a backlit Game Boy Color. Not so nice, a bit archaic. However, this, when it's on, because it's got an AMOLED display, it looks, incredible it really really does and no matter how much i try i can never actually record exactly how good this looks you have to see it to believe it but that's the style so i think it's probably time we move on to the functionality now the functionality is pretty straightforward on both of them let's take a closer look to start with the amazement bib the first thing we need to do is unlock the screen by pressing this button here 
This unlocks the screen and allows us to start swiping. Now, left and right will take us through the different options such as timer, activity monitor, weather, compass, and the settings. And then that's it for that. I'll go back this way and there we are. So that's pretty much it. We can swipe down as well to get access to the do not disturb functionality. And also we can swipe up for access to um, notifications, which you can see are quite in depth here. You've got a lovely um, amount of text on the screen, ideal for reading longer messages and longer emails. Now, if we pop over to this one here, which is the Honor Band 4. So with this one, all you do is press the button at the bottom and it turns it on. Uh, you met with this one here, but then if you swipe up, you get access to the other things, very much like the Amazebit Bip. So we've got our workout currently, or our today's stats. We've got the heart rate, we've got sleep, we've got workout, Alipay, settings, and lastly, the notifications. If we pop into this here, it shows no notifications, but as you can imagine, it's a small screen, so it doesn't show much text, unlike the bit which I just showed you a second ago. But overall, the way you interact with these is very, very similar indeed. So as you see, the functionality is very similar, but the difference is in the app. So let's take a look at the apps. Now on the screen right now, I'm showing you currently the Honor Band 4 app, which is the Huawei Health app. Now, it looks quite straightforward. It's quite a nice app. And as I touched on in the review of it, it's relatively good. The thing that I don't like is the use of pictures in the software itself. So you've got a man stretching his legs here, for example, and you've got someone else running. And I don't like that. I think it looks cluttered and a bit messy. But if we go over to the Amazfit BIP app, it looks a bit sleeker because you haven't got those horrible photos. You've got bold colors, simple display of the data, and I think it looks a bit nicer and easier to navigate. There isn't really much difference in it because it shows you the same sort of data on both of them. The real difference is when it comes to the sleep tracking information. Now, if I go back over here and have a look at the sleep tracking, this is again something that I touched on in the Honor Band 4 review. But the sleep data in this is just phenomenal. I mean, this was a couple of nights ago. So the amount of data you get on here and information about how to improve your sleep is phenomenal. So this is the Amazfit BIPs information. As you can see, it's not a lot. I can't go into any further information. It doesn't really offer me any insights into that or ideas on how I can improve. It does on the day, but then after that, when you look at the records, it tells you no more. Um, so overall, if you're looking for something that can track your sleep better, or well, the app and the software in the Honor Band 4 is slightly better, I'd say. But going back to the point, other than that, I think the apps are largely similar and there doesn't really appear to be much of a difference. Now, I wanted to test the ability of both of these to track a particular activity. So I went for a walk earlier in the snow and recorded the same activity on both. So I wore this on my right wrist and I wore this on my left wrist. And let's compare the two. To be honest, the amount of data that you get or can export from both of these devices is ridiculous. As you can see, on the left we have the Amazfit BIPs record, and on the right we have the Honor Band 4's record, and both are extremely long. So let's zoom in and have a quick look at them in detail. So starting off, if we look real close to the very, very top, the big difference here is that the Amazfit BIP has a GPS module so you get a map of the route that you walked. Now, if we take a closer look at each tracker, just to see how far it thought we walked, the Amazfit BIP said we walked 1.84 miles, whereas the Honor Band 4, I add in kilometers, and it says I walked 3.64 kilometers, which equates to 2.26 miles. So the Honor Band 4 recorded that I walked 0.4 of a mile longer than the Amazfit BIP. Now, I'm more inclined to rely on the Amazfit BIP in this particular instance simply because it had GPS. Now, using the GPS, you're gonna get a much more accurate reading. Now, let's move on from that and let's have a look at some of the other bits that it recorded. So, going down to here, we've got average heart rate. Again, the BIP showed a slightly lower heart rate than the Honor Band 4, although that could be down to me wearing it on different wrists. I don't know. Does that have an effect? I don't know. But there evidently was a bit of a difference between this. So obviously the Honor Band 4 thought I had a higher 
heart rate than the amazement BIP. Which one was more accurate? Well, I guess we could probably take an accurate reading somewhere in the middle for this particular one. Now let's move on to the last thing that I noticed is the steps. Actually, the Honor Band 4 wasn't too far out when you consider just the steps. Over 4,000 odd steps, it recorded 4,200 instead of 4,000. So it's not that far off, but then again, if you're walking for miles and miles and miles, this could add up quite quickly to maybe an extra mile or two. So again, for walking, for recording your distance, the Amazed Fit Bip does appear to be slightly more accurate due to the fact it has that GPS. I guess it's also important to note that, do you know what, fitness trackers are never going to be, at this point anyway, 100% accurate. You will find that certain fitness trackers maybe record a few more steps than others, and others might not record as many steps as another brand. You're always going to get small differences because these aren't medical equipment that are designed to actually track your steps. They're just trying to work it out from your arm movements. And if I moved, say, my left arm more than my right arm, it's potential that it recorded more steps because I was moving the arm more. So you need to remember that these things will never be 100% accurate, but I will say that because of the GPS module in the Amazfit BIP, you will get a more accurate reading than the Honor Band 4. So you can see the accuracy of this is slightly off because it doesn't have GPS, which is a crying shame. But then again, it is a lot smaller than this. So to be fair, you've got to give it its dues. It's got a lot of technology packed into this, but it doesn't obviously have room for GPS. So if you wanted to track your runs and you wanted more accuracy on your walks or tracking your routes, then the Amazfit BIP is slightly better because it's got GPS built in. So you will get more of an accurate overview of your activities. Now, before I go into my conclusion on which one I think is better, let's talk about the price because obviously the price is everything. You know, if this was 600 pounds and this was 20 quid, then without a doubt, you'd go for this one, but that's not the case. Actually, these are very, very similar priced. This is about 50 to 60 pounds. This one is around 40 to 50 pounds. So it's a tad cheaper but not by much. And if you scoured the internet, I'm sure you'd be able to find this for a little bit cheaper as well. As usual is I'll leave a link to both of these in the description below. So head down there and click those links if you wanna check these out for yourself. Now, which one do I think is best and which one would I recommend the most? You all know that the Amazfit BIP has been my most favorite fitness tracker ever. And if you watch back on most of my reviews, I would say about 80% of the time I'm wearing this. Sometimes I'm not, I might be wearing a slightly smarter watch or I might be testing out another smart watch. But generally, this has been my go-to. It's great. I've had it for over a year now and you can see it's still working absolutely fine. It's been pretty much my daily watch for a long, long time. And it's held up very well. It's only got a few light scratches on it. And I've literally worn this whilst doing most things except swimming because obviously this particular one is not waterproof. It's been brilliant. But the real question is, has this knocked this off the throne? And the simple answer is no. I still love and prefer the Amazfit BIP. Now, why is that? Well, okay, fine. This potentially doesn't have quite as nice a screen as this. I mean, the screen is phenomenal. And yes, this doesn't have any waterproof rating at all. If you look at water whilst wearing this, this will die, probably. And this is waterproof down to a depth of 50 meters. But it is a fitness tracker. And being a fitness tracker, it isn't optimized for things like notifications. When you get notifications, they're on a smaller screen. and. As I said in my review of the Honor Band 4, the notifications aren't as snappy as this. I mean, when you get a notification on this, it pops up. You can look at it and it's, it's there straight away. There is no delay at all. Whereas this, there's a small delay. And in terms of looks, this is just a fitness tracker. Whereas this is a smartwatch. It's not a smart watch, but it is a smart watch. And it does look more like a standard watch on your wrist. And that is definitely more my style. So has this knocked this off its throne? No. Did it nearly? 
Well, yes, I think this is very, very good. And you know, I think if you are someone into your fitness and fitness is more the sort of thing that you're looking at doing like swimming and cycling, this is better all round because it can go in the water. So if you do get it wet in the rain or in, if you wanna go swimming and track some lengths, then this is ideal for that, whereas this just isn't. And in terms of your sleep as well, this has much higher data and much more amounts of data for tracking your sleep which is really, really good. So if you are an insomniac and you're looking for something to track your sleep with, this is it. But other than that, other than those two particular things, this for me is the best all-round fitness tracker slash smartwatch still. Now it is January 2019, so there's still time this year for it to be knocked off its throne. But so far, this is still my favorite fitness tracker of 2019 slash smartwatch of 2019. This, as I've said all along, is the Casio of smartwatches. And that concludes today's review. Guys, if you liked today's video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I hope I've managed to help you decide which one of these you should buy. I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon. Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Stu's reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.